My Hero Academia Season 5 Episode 6 is out. And with this new episode, we get right into the second half of the epic Battle of the Beauties. Team Momoya Yorozu versus Team Itsuka Kendo. Who will come out the bestest of the best girls? This episode, like its predecessor, covers two chapters from the manga, following the events of chapter 200 and 201. So, without further ado, let's jump right into My Hero Academia Season 5 Episode 6, titled Foresight. And as usual, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. This episode opens up exactly where the last episode left off, with Team Momo cornering Shihai Kuro Iro after his almost flawless surprise attack on Yuga Aoyama. God, it's such a good scream. However, right before Momo and Invisigirl can lay down the absolute smackdown on Shihai, mushrooms begin to appear everywhere. As it turns out, everything that has happened has all been a part of Kendo's plan. The source of these fungi is Class 1B's fun gal, Kinoko Komori, whose quirk allows her to create spores that spawn mushrooms in her surrounding area. These mushrooms can appear on her, on most other surfaces, and on her opponents both inside and out. That's gonna be important later. Now I I gotta say, I really like this view of Kendo being a great tactician and leader. She came up with a two-stage plan that has been working basically flawlessly. And remember, she didn't know who was going to be on her team for this competition. She had just as much time to prepare for this battle as Momo did. And she is owning it. This helps to exemplify why she is Class 1B's rep, and it's great to see it. But anyway, as Team Momo tries to deal with their new mushroom problem, in the distance they hear what seems to be a crazy man screaming. But as it turns out, it's actually just Team Kendo member Manga Fukudashi, who is using his quirk Comic, which allows him to materialize comic sound effects and onomatopoeia in the real world, which take on the characteristics of said word. His quirk is basically Kuichi Hirosei stand echoes from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. And as Manga pulls off a Hinata from Haikyuu describing his feelings crying out Bing Bang Kaboom, a massive word wall crashes through the battlefield separating the members of Team Momo. Once Team Momo has been separated, Manga proceeds to call out damp sound effects, which act as humidifiers increasing both the range and strength of Kinoko's spores. Man, this team has really got that cooperation ting down, which is a big contrast to Class 1B Team 1, showing not only the difference between those who work together and those that don't, but also also, that the teams have already learned from their peers' mistakes, making sure not to fall into the same problems. And speaking from learning from past mistakes, the story then cuts back onto Momo Yayorozu, who is separated from the rest of her team thanks to Manga's word wall. It's revealed that Momo's separation from her teammates was the main priority of Team Kendo's plan, as Kendo jumps out from the shadows at Momo and ferociously begins to attack her fellow beauty in an attempt to take down what she calls the brains of the opponent opposing team. Kendo proceeds to mercilessly unleash a barrage of punches on Momo, preventing her from being able to create any useful items or giving her time to tink. This plan of attack was formulated by Kendo based on Momo's fight against Tokoyami during the sports festival, where she was quickly defeated due to Tokoyami's endless offensive onslaught. Callbacks like this are one of the reasons why I love this series, because Kendo coming up with this strategy makes perfect sense. She was in the crowd when the fight took place and she saw it happen. And from studying her opponent's previous conflicts, she identified a weakness and now is using that weakness to give herself the upper hand. It's like a football team watching their rivals' games to see how they can beat them in an upcoming match. It makes logical sense, which is the best kind of sense when it comes to crazy superhero fights. Second only to common. And just like how it makes sense for Kendo to come up with this plan of action, it also makes sense how she couldn't account for Momo's growth. As it cuts back to the rest of UA's hero course first year spectating the fight where Kendo's boy toy himbo, Tetsu 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 Tetsu, who by the way has the greatest name of any character ever, complimenting his class rep, calling out how she executed the perfect plan. But Todoroki politely informs the ironclad warrior not to count Momo out just yet, as while remembering the events of his and Momo's final exam, Todoroki mentions that if Team Kendo were really worried about Momo, all four of them should have focused on getting rid of her together, as she would have predicted and prepared for this seemingly hopeless 1v1 fight with Kendo. We then cut back to the Battle of the Beauties, where Momo reveals that while she was blocking all of Kendo's attacks by creating shields, she was also simultaneously creating something far bigger. That something being a literal cannon. That's right, in this 1v1 fight, Momo creates a cannon to use against Kendo. Or at least that's what everyone thinks. Kendo, realizing that her fellow hero student wouldn't fucking obliterate her just to 
to pass a training test, although I wouldn't put it past Momo to be honest, she assumes that Momo is instead going to use it to break down the word wall separating her from her team, as she swivels the cannon towards the wall. However, this is in fact a double juke, as when the cannon fires and Kendo attacks Momo, it doesn't shoot a cannonball, but instead a bag full of support items over the wall towards her teammates. And with this, Momo admits to herself that in a 1v1 fight against Kendo, there was very little chance she could actually beat her. So, with Kendo distracted by the bag that just shot over the wall, Momo, who is still attached to her cannon, creates a tick rope which she uses to tie herself to Kendo, essentially restraining Kendo by severely limiting her movement. While all of this was going on, Shihai, Manga, and Kinoko were off dismantling the rest of Team Momo. Aoyama gets taken and captured, and Tokoyami gets beaten around for a bit. On the cusp of defeat and separated from their leader, Tokoyami, who has started to help clean the now mushroom-riddled invisible girl, who, might I mention, is naked, so he is just slapping away at her biddies when he notices Momo's lucky bag flying through the air. Tokoyami flies up into the air using Dark Shadow and retrieves the bag which contains a set of thermal goggles and ethanol, which can be used to kill mushrooms. Now fully cleaned and ready to go, Tokoyami and Hagakure begin their hunt for the hiding members of Team Kendo. There is a little cute note here as the story cuts to Shihai and Kinoko who are discussing their plan of action. During this conversation, Shihai is strangely quiet and not saying much compared to the loud Kinoko. The reason he is like this is not because of them trying to hide, but it's because he actually has a crush on Kinoko and because of this, he finds it really hard to talk to her. Aww. But this romantic discussion is quickly interrupted as Tokoyami, using his new thermal goggles, finds the two hiding heroes and begins his assault. While this is going on, Invisible Girl has found Manga and is laying down the absolute smackdown on him. You can't hit what you can't see, bitch! As Tokoyami is flying towards Kinoko and Shihai, he credits Momo's talent, as she managed to prepare for what seemed to be the most unpredictable of circumstances. He also mentions Hawk's belief that speed beats power, and in saying this, he uses his new super move called Black Abyss Sabbat, quickly taking down Shihai and Kinoko in one foul swoop. Shihai, looking to escape in darkness, gets trapped in Tokoyami's cloak, and Dark Shadow captures Kinoko. And with this, it looks like Class 1A is about to get another victory. But just as it seems Emo Bird Boy has finally won the day, he begins to cough uncontrollably. Unfortunately for Tokoyami, he didn't knock out Kinoko, who, in terrifying fashion, used her quirk to make mushrooms appear in his windpipe, making it so he couldn't breed. As Tokoyami falls to the ground, Shihai and Kinoko escape, and at the same time, Kendo appears, still tied to an unconscious Momo and a cannon, by the way, and she captures Invisible Girl by surprise. And with this, Team Kendo captures all of Team Momo's members, winning the bout 4-0. And with this, the episode ends on an upbeat note, that while Class 1A may have lost this fight, each member truly did go plus ultra. Overall, it was a pretty good episode. It was cool seeing Manga and Kinoko's quirks finally animated, and it's always a delight seeing Momo do her thing. In general, however, it didn't feel like that much happened, as a lot of the episode was a flashback or just expanding on stuff that just occurred. But hey, you win some, you lose some. Next week, we get to see the third fight of this arc, and oh boy, is it a big one. We not only get to see Todoroki and Ida in action, but they are also facing off against the beloved Tetsu Tetsu and another student who got into UA on recommendation, Juzo Honanuki. But let me know what you thought of this episode. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.